Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Matt Chat, episode 418, and uh, for this episode we'll be looking back at a game that I hesitate to call classic, uh, just because it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem possible to me that enough time could go by that we could be talking about uh, this game as a classic, but um, what I'm talking about is Neverwinter Nights, the original game. It came out back in 2002, which is uh, about 17 years ago. Kind of a scary thought. Uh, this is, I thought it before I uh, got into the video, I would show you my copy. I got a couple copies of the Platinum version. Um, and if you get the Platinum version, it comes, of course, with a nice uh, spiral-bound manual uh, that's actually quite useful uh, for this game. Of course, you get the desk and a nice uh, set as well. And I think this also yeah, includes some very nice artwork. Don't know how well you can see this. Uh, but the best part, of course, is this uh, little cloth map. So it's not quite as big as some of the other cloth maps, but you do get the uh, Neverwinter Nights, uh, uh, the town of Neverwinter Nights and the surrounding cities. And so I think it's, it's a good thing to point out because, uh, you know, you can generally get a copy of this for not, it's not too much money. Find it on eBay and it's uh, not so old that it's, you know, it's, if their copies are scarce or anything. So it's a good collectible. Uh, so if you don't have it, it'd be good to pick it up. Uh, anyway, obviously I'm a big fan of the game. Uh, the version I'll be covering here is the uh, Beam Dog Enhanced Edition. Now I'm not such a big fan of that, uh, but we'll get that in the uh, video. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Neverwinter Nights. All right, folks, and here we go with Neverwinter Nights. Uh, certainly one of the best games from the early 2000s, and it represented something of a breakthrough at the time. Uh, even just a few months before this, Icewind Dale 2 came out, another of these uh, great D&D-based games. It's based on the same rule set, the third edition. Uh, but that game, like the other Infinity Engine games like Baldur's Gate and uh, Icewind Dale, uh, was only two dimensions. So you had these pre-rendered backdrops, and then your characters were animated on top of that. Uh, it was beautiful, looked great for the time, but uh, by 2002 there was a lot of pressure for... Uh, Bioware, of course, to do a, a full 3D game uh, with a camera that you can control. <laughs> and that's what we get here. Uh, now, there's a lot of uh, stuff we can criticize about the game, uh, but generally the reviews were very positive when it first came out. A lot of people were impressed with the graphics, uh, the D&D, uh, &D, the implementation of the third edition rules. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of great things to say, got very high reviews, but on the other hand, some people criticized it for its storyline and some people thought that it had too much combat, or too much focus on combat, but of course <laughs> we ignore those kind of people. Uh, and that was developed by uh, James Olin and Brent Knowles, and both of those guys had worked on plenty of uh, earlier hits, including, uh, the, uh, well, Brent, I guess uh, James Olin goes a little further back. He worked on the first Baldur's Gate, as well as uh, Shattered Steel. Uh, but Brent Knowles also worked on Baldur's Gate 2, and he worked on, later on, Jade Empire and Dragon Age. And I think Brent, yeah, I'm pretty sure, actually, I'm, yeah, Brent and the uh, producer on this game, Trent Oster, went on to uh, uh, found or work at uh, Beamdog, which is the company, by the way, that did the enhanced edition of this game. And I'll just say at the outset, I'm not really happy with uh, the enhanced edition. I don't think they made enough enhancements. Uh, we'll get into that. Some of the sort of stuff that annoyed me about the first version of the game were dealt with in the enhanced edition on the positive side though they have higher resolutions and they brought the multiplayer back <laughs> even though again there there's a lot of bugs and glitches uh, but i don't want to make it seem like i i'm negative about neverwinter nights it's a really great game great value lots of uh you know basically just endless gameplay if you want to get into these expansions here uh, some of the other premium uh, campaigns uh, but really this the focus here i think is on the user generated stuff the community the modding community is enormous for this game. <laughs> you just never run out of stuff. And uh, pretty much anything you want to criticize about this has probably been addressed in one of those uh, community patches or, or fan base patches. But anyway, I'm not going to play those this time. We'll just be sticking strictly to this enhanced edition, which is very easy to find and get running uh, within Steam, as you can see. Uh, now, what I plan to do here 
I want to play a little bit of the uh, first part of the game. I'll create a character with you. Uh, we will skip, though, the tutorial. I'll play it because it's kind of necessary to get some experience <laughs> so you don't start the game at level uh, one. Uh, but we'll just dump, uh, jump into chapter one. I'll show you. I'll play through the first area of the, uh, I think it's called the Peninsula District. We'll play through that together. And then I'll show you a little bit of the later game. Maybe see if I can get my friend Gotrick to show you what the co-op mode looks like, uh, which I think is where the real fun is uh, if you're playing this game today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the game as we go along, but there's uh, we'll have a lot of fun here. <laughs> it's just a, a fantastic game. It really scratches that itch, and I think it's aged pretty well. Now, whether or not you choose to go the Enhanced Edition or you're looking for the box copy, uh, which I would recommend because you get lots of uh, cool perks with that, and there's a lot of great material, even a... Uh, like you get the official uh, perfect guide, you get the poster like I have back there. <laughs> a lot of collectible stuff with this. I'm pretty sure the original game came with even came with a cloth map, uh, which I'm fairly certain I have it up here somewhere. I don't know where my <laughs> I've got so many at this point. I don't even know where it is, but somewhere in the Mat Cave there's a cloth map uh, of Neverwinter Nights. Uh, so and it come, came with a nice manual as well. So a lot of nice stuff. But I mean, anyway, let's just jump into it. Uh, we will be doing the original campaign, which is where most of the criticism of the story kicks in. But as you saw back there, what do we have? The Undertide, the Underdark, uh, all these, uh, I think these are the ones Beamdog might have made. Uh, so really, like I say, it's an incredible value. And I think, I don't have any problems with the original campaign. I actually like it just fine. Uh, I don't remember having any criticisms at all back in the day. It's kind of curious. <laughs> There's chapters three and four there. Uh, I guess I haven't gotten to these chapters yet in my uh, single-player game. But anyway, we'll, we'll really, uh, be playing the Prelude. I'll play the Prelude. I won't show it to you because it's basically just stuff that <laughs> you either know already or you'll want to find out on your own. So we'll skip that and just jump to Chapter uh, 1 uh, for the uh, purposes of this video. But I do want to create a character with you and talk about some of the fun options you get with this. And as I said, this is based on the third edition Dungeons and Dragons. It's not advanced Dungeons and Dragons, as I tend to say accidentally sometimes. <laughs> Sorry if I slip occasionally. Just used to that terminology. Uh, but the big differences are here we have uh, skills, we have feats, uh, the multi-classing is different, armor class has been reworked, and pretty much the big deal is the shift to a d20, or this sort of big, you know, big die, <laughs> 20 sides obviously. Uh, and that was a, considered a big leap forward from the old days when you just rolled the uh, regular die, uh, the six-sided dies, <laughs> everything based around rolling three of them to get 18s. Uh, now we're looking for 20s. And instead of the Thaco system, that's gone, been replaced with this uh, attack rolls and uh, an armor class that gets better as it gets higher instead of lower. So I think that's, <laughs> I think I got all this straight. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we could talk as we go along. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. Uh, I'll, most It's mostly intuitive, and I'll try to point to spots where it's it's a little bit weird. But anyway, first choice, male or female, doesn't make any difference. <laughs> I guess nowadays they'd want to have uh, 30 or 40 different genders. Uh, here, though, it's just male or female, and it just doesn't really make any difference, except in terms of role play. Uh, race, however, does make a difference. See, we have dwarves and elves and gnomes, all the usual suspects are here. Uh, there's humans. And you can even just make it, make up your own race if you like. That's the sub-race and pick some uh, stats for that. Uh, some of the stats have uh, favorite classes, like the half-orc is uh, great for barbarians. And let's see, what uh, multi-class half-orc's barbarian class doesn't count when determining whether he suffers an XP penalty for multi-class. Uh, so if you try to have a half-orc that's a, a gnome, or say, <laughs> what am I saying? If you want to have a half-orc wizard slash, uh, I don't know, a thief, uh, you might take some XP penalties for that. Uh, which is generally why I recommend the human, because they don't have those penalties. You can multi-class whatever you like. Uh, plus, the human is uh, gets an extra feat at first level, which is actually a pretty nice uh, perk. Uh, and then gets four extra skill points at the first level, plus one additional skill point at each additional level. So you see the... <laughs> Uh, some of these other races, like the half work again, you get dark vision, which is pretty cool. You can see in the dark. And but probably the biggest reason to pick the uh, half orc is this uh, orcish ability adjustment, plus two to strength. Uh, but on the other hand, a minus two to int and a minus two to charisma. So there's not a 
not really necessarily a deal breaker. You could pick anything you like. You could be, you know, if you want to have a half orc who is uh, the wizard slash bard, whatever you could do that. You can make it work. And the game's not going to uh, punish you too badly for that. And a lot of people even argue against the idea. You know, don't don't worry too much about min maxing and picking the perfect, you know, stats and perfect race and everything. It's just kind of what what do you want to play? Uh, what do you like to imagine and think about as you play? Uh, that's generally preferred over trying to pick the perfect possible character. <laughs> you know, it's not that punishing of a game. Uh, so don't get too fixated on it. Uh, but just for me, I wanted to create a, uh, a character kind of like Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> you know, I know, really original, right? Uh, but I'm looking for somebody that can be a barbarian, uh, but not like clad in heavy mail. I want somebody dexterous. I want to add a few levels of thief in there. Because uh, if you read those Conan novels, he's always pretty much as much a thief as he is a warrior. Yes, he's big and strong, but he's not incredibly stupid. <laughs> not always about the brawn, at least in the, uh, uh, the, the novels. So we'll be looking for something kind of like him, is uh, what I'm shooting for here. And, you know, again with these portraits, it's probably none of the portraits are going to be perfect. There's not a whole lot to choose from, unfortunately. But again, this is something you can easily download a mod and have uh, hundreds of portraits if you like. And we can, uh, none of these characters look a whole lot like how I imagine Conan to be. This one kind of comes close, so maybe we'll go with this. <laughs> uh, but again, you could upload your own character portrait if you like. It's, there's some instructions to do that if you are so interested. Alright, we have a lot of uh, different races, and there's also prestige classes you can get into. But I like the Barbarians because they get D12 hit die, so they get more hit points basically and uh, they have another cool perk called rage that gives you basically uh, a damage bonus at the expense I believe of, uh, of uh, armor class so they're a little bit more vulnerable while they're raging but they do a lot more damage so you wouldn't want to use it on a real tough monster but if you're in a group which you are in this game a lot of times uh, up against a big group of weaker foes uh, that can quickly help you to uh, uh, to mow them down, basically. Especially if you combine that with cleave. And <laughs> I'm getting kind of ahead of myself here. Let's just click on <laughs> Barbarian. <laughs> Alright, so i got a level 1 Barbarian. And we want to make him uh, chaotic good. Uh, so combining a good heart with a free spirit. I kind of like that idea. Don't generally play evil characters. I always thought neutral characters were kind of wishy-washy. <laughs> uh, we can look at what, the, what do they recommend. So you see what they do there, they just bump everything up to 10 so you avoid this. Let me mention this quickly. The, uh, the, the numbers in parentheses are your proficiency bonuses. And generally it's frowned upon, or it's not as advantageous to you to have a, an, an odd number here for one of these because it doesn't bump up your proficiency bonus. And a lot of the rolls, attacks, skill checks will check this uh, proficiency bonus here. Uh, I'll get into that in a second, but just for now, keep in mind if you've got this even, you want an even number, not an odd number, because the odd numbers don't get that bonus. So let's see if we can take away some points, maybe from Charisma, to bump up our Dexterity, because I really want a, uh, a Rogue, I want a Barbarian with some Rogue levels, so I want a decent Strength and a decent Dexterity. <laughs> and believe me, you don't want to go below 14 on Constitution because you will be taking a lot of hits and if that's too low you're just going to basically be cannon fodder so I want to keep this reasonably high uh, wisdom you want to keep that reasonably high as well because there's a lot of saving throws and you'll basically be getting hit with all kinds of terrible uh, spells if <laughs> this is too low and uh, intelligence yeah it says there if you go below a nine you won't talk properly you know, me be talking like this <laughs> me won't kill you know, that'll be your your conversation options at that point uh, so I'll keep that up there the charisma I wish I could keep this higher just so I could be more persuasive but <laughs> you know you can't do it all uh, so just if we have to take a hit we'll take it there in charisma even though I think uh, you know big brawny barbarians should be charismatic right but maybe we can make up for it with some abilities uh, later on or some skills uh, the, the packages here basically just sets up your uh, your skills and your feats for you, but I mean, who would want to do that? I mean, half the fun is building your own character. Uh, so I think I would just click on recommended, see what they recommend. If you agree with it, fine, but you might want to uh, adjust it a little bit. 
Uh, and then finally, another point to consider is the whether it's a class skill or not. Uh, as I said, I plan to later on, uh, when we get to level 2 or level 3, we can add some levels of Rogue, and these will be different class skills. But basically, the class skill just means it only takes one point to raise it as opposed to two. Like Hide for a Barbarian costs two points, whereas a Listen for the uh, Barbarian doesn't cost but one. But if you look at Listen, though, it just alerts a character to hidden creatures that may be nearby. I don't think that's all that important, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I think Parry will be a bigger deal, but I can't go above four with that anyway. Uh, ride, I don't have any uh, mounts. <laughs> I don't do the crafting, so we can just get rid of that entirely. Uh, discipline's already maxed out. That protects you against uh, disarming and called shots and knockdowns, which do happen. I think it is worth putting some points into that. So basically, I would recommend Lore over those other ones. Lore will help me identify items I find. And maybe since I have that low... Uh, since I do have that low charisma, maybe I can make up for it a little bit with Intimidate. <laughs> uh, to try to bully people if all other... If all else fails, I could try to be intimidating. And I think we'll just do that for now. Taunting, I, I can never seem to make it work. <laughs> and you don't have a full party with this game anyway, so it probably is not that big a deal just to get rid of that. Now we get into the interesting ones, the feats. And as a human, remember I get one of my perks is I get an extra feat, so that's really cool. Again, we can see what they recommend just for comparison. Uh, they want me to go with a great axe, so this will be just one big weapon. Don't know how well that's going to interface with my rogue later on, but we can consider it. Uh... The thing about a weapon focus is it gives you plus one attack bonus, which is it might not sound like a big deal, but it's actually huge. Because <laughs> if you don't have a decent hit uh, bonus, attack bonus, you'll be missing, 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 missing. I mean, you miss every time. It's, it's kind of like Pool of Radiance with Thaco. Uh, so I think, you know, it's great. It gives you that extra edge, and plus you will get a free great axe <laughs> when we start playing. Uh, the downside is that we're kind of stuck. You know, you only get so many feats, and if you if you kind of build up a great axe, if you find a great mace or a great longsword, uh, it's not going to be so great for you, right? Because you basically be wasting feats, which you probably don't want to do. And so I guess it's kind of like it kind of uh, the upside is you'll be better with a great axe. The downside is you might find all kinds of great weapons. It seems to be the curse, right? You <laughs> you specialize in great axe great axe so naturally you're going to be finding great weapons in every other category uh, but anyway maybe we can go with it uh power attack to me sucks because you lose uh five to your attack roll which as i say i'm missing all the time anyway i would never want to make that worse yeah it doesn't matter if i'm doing more damage if i can't hit <laughs> you don't do any damage uh, so that's why i don't like power attack but and this is a big uh, but. The uh, upshot is, if I take it, and uh, next time I get a feat, I can get a cleave. And cleave is an awesome skill. It lets you attack. As soon as you kill something, you just get a free attack on the thing next to it. And since this game is so often you're attacked by a group of creatures, that's actually well worth it. So even if I don't use power attack ever, I will definitely use cleave. So I would go ahead and pick up power attack. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, I don't think there's necessarily one right answer or one wrong answer. You could pick any feats and make it work. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's the way I like to play. I like to imagine just mowing down this huge group. I'm not really going to mess with the appearance because you know, it take all day with that and it doesn't really change anything. I'm going to have armor on. <laughs> anyway, and a helmet. To your weapons. By my direction... Attack! Let's see, which of these sounds the most like our good old buddy Conan? I'm going to go ahead and name him Conan. <laughs> Does Conan have a last name? I think it's like the Sumerian, right? <laughs> I guess we could squeeze that in. I'm not 100% sure that's how you spell Sumerian, but we will go with that. No quarter! Attack! Get on him! Attack! Att attack! I say attack! <laughs> I say attack! <laughs> I could have some fun with that, but it's kind of breaking my role playing. Strike at them! Attack! By my will, attack! 
Faith shall grant me victory. Fall before the righteous. You know, there is a Weird Al character called Conan the Librarian. Which <laughs> it's a lot of if you haven't seen UHF, go look for the clip because that is absolutely hilarious. Attack! Kill them now! Uh, just look for Conan the Librarian. You're gonna laugh your butt off. To the fight, my friends! Don't just stand there! <laughs> <laughs> See if we had the if we had the intellect down to eight, we could pick that. Their time has come. Once more into the breach, my friends. I want to see suffering. I want to see suffering. You know, after a long day at work, you might feel like a sociopath. Now, strike swiftly. My steel will strike true. Show them your steel. Attack! Now see what a true warrior looks like. You know, this neutral warrior sounds more like Conan to me than the other ones we've been looking at, so I'm just going to go with that. Oh, wait, go back, go back. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, I canceled out everything. Great. Okay, let me quickly do this again. Because I, I need to pick a deity for Conan. He's uh, all about craw. This will be a lot faster now. <laughs> I don't have to explain what I'm doing. Get that at 16, I think, right? Up to 14. Get these out of... Uh, can't believe that where it is. Uh, package, configure package. Uh, discipline. Intimidate. Lore. And what's the other one? Parry. Oh, there's a... What? What did I put these points into? Good grief. What's my other class skill? Not doing the crafts. Disable, discipline. I could do heal. Okay, I guess those are all my class skills. I guess I might as well put the other points into... Uh, what's the only other one there that makes any sense? Uh, listen? <laughs> Why not? I think maybe even heal would be better than that. Uh, you could find these healing uh, kits to heal yourself up. You know, actually, that is just so utterly useless. I think I will go with the listen. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll help somehow. Uh, I could just go with some of these ones that aren't my class skill, but you're basically blowing uh, points. And let's see. These were... So it picked last time. Weapon focus. You know what? Uh, Conan doesn't use a great axe. He uses a great sword, right? So I'm going to go with that instead. And then, uh, so it's, it is kind of nice that I had to restart, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what was the other one? Power attack. Yeah, if you look at the description here, it's required for cleave and great cleave. And we're definitely going to want that, so we'll go with those. I do wish I had dodge here. Yeah, we can pick that up later. Get on them. Okay, Attack, we'll I say. To neutral. Show them your steel. Oh my Attack. God! Did I? Okay. Whew. Get on them. I thought Attack, I missed I say. God, This is the true challenge. Can Matt get through the character creation process? I guess as long as I'm stopped here, I might as well make sure that's the right way to spell the uh, Conan's uh, birthplace. It's got two M's. E-R-I-A-N. Yes, I was correct, of course. <laughs> I think the V's not capitalized, though. Okay, deity! Is your name a deity? And it's, is it Krom? With uh, one M? Yes. By Krom! All right, there we go. Make sure he's a neutral warrior. Show them your steel! <laughs> Attack! Badaboo! We've got Conan the Sumerian. Uh, now this first bit, we're just kind of running around a tutorial. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, just play this uh, offline, and then I'll come back and we'll play uh, chapter one together. All right, so we're picking it up. I just finished the prelude chapter, which is basically the tutorial. And I highly recommend that you do as well if you play this, because as you can see, I went from a level one to a level three by the time I was done with it. And also have a lot of stuff I can sell 
So, even though it looks superfluous, you'd think, well, I don't need the tutorial. I recommend you go ahead and do it anyway, because you're going to get a bunch of stuff. And the game is pretty hard if you're level one starting out, <laughs> as uh, yours truly has seen for himself. Uh, so let's see, we got, uh, kind of like in Baldur's Gate, I suppose, the Academy, or Candle Keep, I think it was called in that game. And it gets attacked. Uh, we managed to fight our way out. It's kind of one of those, uh, you know, they had to go to the students to find the, the hero that will save the day. <laughs> a lot of intrigue going on here. You don't really know who to trust. You know, pretty good stuff for a, a computer role-playing game. Even though some people have criticized the story, I think it's a uh, nuanced. Just skip through it for now, though. Get to the meat of it. Uh, like I say, though, this story, this game is not really story heavy. At least I don't know anybody that plays this game <laughs> just to get uh, just for the story. You know, it's really more about the tactics and the party control. But I'll go through the gist of it with you. Here's Lady Arabeth. She's the paladin in charge. Yeah, Paladin serves a tier right hand of Nasher Alagandar, Lord of Neverwinter. So now we get to do a little role playing to figure out, you know, what would Conan say, or what would a chaotic good character have to say? <laughs> uh, they give a generally give, you know, a fair number of options as to, you know, what we might say to her. And a lot of times, uh, this, if you say the wrong thing, it can cut off a conversation. It might be hard to get back. Uh, and it doesn't spell out like what's considered a evil or aggressive response <laughs> you have to actually read the text uh, i would prefer it if it was just the old pool of radiance style where it just had a nice response meek response abusive response and so haughty and so on uh, but i guess this is a little more precise it just makes you read more and yet you, you don't get to use your imagination as much to think of, you know what would what would i say <laughs> you just have to read it to find out so let's see i came as quickly as i could your early training at the academy. Neverwinter has need of one like you if we are to survive the Wailing Death. The attack on the academy doused the one faint spark of hope the city had. I need you to help recover that which we have lost. Uh, so the city, by the way, is suffering from a plague and all manner of uh, crises have broken out. It would be an honor to serve you, Lady Arabeth. I knew I could count on you. There are many rumors about the plague. But if you are to aid me in this, it is important you know the truth about the Wailing Death. Our divine healers can do nothing to help those afflicted by the Wailing Death. And even our most powerful magic cannot raise those who succumb to the illness. So there but a we short go. time ago, we had word that Kelvin Blackstaff Aronson, the famous Archmage of Waterdeep, had discovered a potential cure, one that might be concocted from the essence of four rare and magical creatures. You know, the voice acting is pretty good in this game. There's not a not all the text is voice acted, obviously. You'll be doing quite a bit of reading. Uh, but I think it's a good balance. I didn't feel like I was doing more reading than I was <laughs> fighting, hacking and slashing, which is uh, usually what I like. <laughs> See, time's wasting. No, I don't want to say that. Who became of these creatures? A cockatrice. I ordered them sent to the Academy, Neverwinter's renowned training institution for adventurers of every ilk. I once studied there myself, and I thought the instructors and students were loyal to Lord Nasher. The Academy may have been betrayed from within, or perhaps I simply put too much faith in the instructors, students, and staff to keep this new secret, as Dester claims. You were there. You saw the slaughter. The attack caught us unprepared. You are one of only a handful of survivors from the carnage of the Academy. Benthic and Dester arrived with reinforcements, but during the confusion of battle, the Water Davian creatures disappeared into the streets of... Your task in this is to... Second, we must... All right, so just to kind of uh, give you the gist of all this, I don't want to drag this video on forever. Uh, the Academy was had these creatures here, these strange creatures. You got to see them if you played the uh, tutorial. Uh, in some cages, trying to find out if they could use these creatures to form a cure for this plague. Uh, now the academy's been attacked, creatures kidnapped or stolen, uh, so I have to track down what happened to the creatures and 
course, they'll all be nicely distributed amongst the various sectors of uh, Neverwinter Nights, neighborhoods, districts. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so that's kind of the basic setup. But, you know, along the way, you'll learn a lot more about who these characters are, who you can trust, who you can and can't trust. I'm going to start off by seeing what I can sell. Get some free healing. I don't know if I needed that or not, but it never hurts. Uh, where I'm at right now, by the way, is the temple. One of the cool things about this game is you you have a ward stone, or I forget what they call it, a uh, stone of recall uh, that you can use to zap you back here. It's free to zap back here, but to get if you want to teleport back to where you were before, that will cost you. It's a it's a fair amount, so you probably don't want to do that. Uh, more than you need to. I think it's uh, 50 gold starting off, and then you get to the next zone, it's 150. So I'm just selling off. This is some of the stuff I picked up in the uh, prelude. She won't buy this uh, trap from me, so I can just toss that, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I could use that at some... What is it? A, uh... I don't know if I could... Looks like I could try to set a trap. Well, Actually, hold on to that. Maybe it'll be fun play around with traps. Uh, let's see, what else can I sell? I picked up this Shield of the Watch, but I kind of loathe to part with it. It's actually a pretty awesome shield, but it only works really well against humans. I don't know. I guess I'll sell it. I plan to use uh, two-handed weapons on this character. Keep my thief's tools. Uh, some people recommend just selling off all the potions you find. Uh, I'll just hold on to it. I will sell off all these books, though. It won't let you sell the quest items, so you don't have to worry about that. Picked up a bunch of scrolls in there. So let's see how much money I'll have. <laughs> I said, look at this. Just by doing uh, the tutorial, I have almost a thousand. I actually have 1,100 gold, plus I have a cool brawler's belt. This gives me a bludgeoning resistance. And even some gloves of discipline. So I feel like I've made off like a bandit doing that tutorial. It's pretty awesome. So I want to keep in mind, I will need to hire a henchman. Those are about 150 to 200 gold, something like that. And I might want to upgrade my gear a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned before, one of the things with the third edition is you want a high AC. And you're, depending on what whether you want to be sort of big, strong, and encased in iron, slow, uh, that's not what I'm going for with this character. I want somebody who's more flexible, more uh, agile. So I want to make sure that's got a good dexterity bonus so he can actually take advantage of his high dexterity, which, if you recall, is uh, 16. So he gets up to a 3 bonus. So I'm looking for the best armor I can find that will allow me to have at least a 3... <laughs> up to a 3-point uh, bonus on my uh, armor. So we can see what's available here. Got chain mail, but that stops at 2. Scale mail uh, is 4, so base armor class of 4, maximum dex 4. This is the, exactly the same as the chain shirt, so no need to do that. Uh, leather's got a lower class, and that's not good either. So it looks like I got about the best armor. <laughs> oh, here's some more. Let's see, I can't wear banded mail, that must be heavy. Splint, so if it's in red, obviously I can't wear it. And I'm not going to be buying those anytime soon, so let's... uh. Maybe look for a helmet. All the helmets do really is give you more concentration. <clears throat> Not all that valuable for somebody who doesn't cast spells. Although the helmets do look pretty cool. So what I might want to do is... Uh, let's see, I don't think I'll be able to afford any boots. Or, I've already got a belt. It's probably about as good as I'm going to find for a while. Uh, I doubt she has magical weapons. Don't need more scrolls at the moment. Could look into a necklace, but, uh, <coughs> see, natural armor. Armor bonus plus one AC, na AC natural modifier. Now, I'm a little bit uncertain if, uh, you know, there's, there's certain things that won't stack. Like if you have armor plus one, sometimes that won't stack with other plus ones. You can't just uh, keep going up. Like it doesn't do you any good to have two rings of protection. Yeah, like this ring of protection to give me a uh, plus one. AC deflection modifier. Looks like this necklace here. Don't worry, Siri. Uh, this next. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, one of these necklaces. Yeah, natural armor. Plus AC natural modifier. So let me just save it quick. 
and see if that actually works because I don't want to waste my, my all my money Do you have news of the but I uh, will see what was the cheaper option there the ring probably ring of protection 1165 or the natural armor is a little cheaper let's buy this and see if it works see if it actually does adjust my AC uh, so it did that worked so now I should have a Let's see if it specifies how I got to my AC. <coughs> really seeing it there. So it's not telling me how it computes that AC, but I bet if I were to try to stack something else that had a natural armor uh, modifier on it, it wouldn't raise it anymore. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, AC of 18 is not the worst AC <laughs> I've ever played with. Uh, the only downside is I've well, I've still got enough money I can hire a henchman. I'm not going to hire Tommy because I've already... I want to be my own rogue with Conan here. He's got two, one level of rogue already. So, let's see. Bethany. Oh, please, can you help me? You're with the city militia, aren't you? The guards at the gate said I might get help over here, but I don't know if they're serious. So, you know... we. <laughs> Uh, we've already exhausted most of the voice acting, I suppose, so now we're just reading text. That's fine with me. I don't need to hear every line. <clears throat> Although, again, enhanced edition. This would have been something easy enough to enhance. <laughs> uh, Bethany, it's a peninsula district. I live in there. Easy then. Tell me when you're ready. All right, so she's telling me to go to the peninsula district. The prisoners have broken out. I could choose to be a jerk about it, try to extort money from her. Or I could just tell her, stay here, be safe, let me <laughs> let me go take care of those prisoners. And there's plenty to do just running around here in this uh, city core. I see these chests are everywhere. I could pick up some pots, some healing potions. You can never really seem to get enough of those. However, I know it's probably not the most exciting thing watching me running around <laughs> collecting all the barrels. <laughs> and so I'll try to fight my temptation to do that. Uh, we could take a peek at the... I probably won't be able to afford anything, so I'm not really going to bother going to the... Uh, uh, going to that arm shop to like uh, kill some stuff and get better. <laughs> Improve my bottom line a little bit. I can't stop off in this tavern, though. To the yeah, that's Ophala. <laughs> I don't even know if I've mentioned this yet, but... You know, check out this uh, camera control, right? <laughs> it's 3D! We can look all around the characters. So that's something you couldn't do in Icewind Dale 2. All right, you stiff competition for attention tonight, I fear. I'm Conan. I have a few questions. What kind of place do you run here? <laughs> it's a place of comfort and understanding. <coughs> so I remember it was a big deal when this came out that it was in 3D and all that. Although, personally, I, I think Icewind Dale 2 looked a little bit better. And as you can see, when you really zoom in on these characters, they, <laughs> you know, it looks like a game from 2002. Uh, even though it's the enhanced edition... You know, <laughs> I'm not going to pick on Beamdog all throughout this video, I promise. But, I, you know, I can't say it enough. I don't feel like I got enough enhancement uh, out of this. So I failed my persuasion. Uh, let's see what do we want to do. Uh, I don't even want to go into the back room, so... We'll see. There we go. Finally persuaded her. <laughs> so she she's an avid collector... And apparently, she wants a few pieces of art liberated. The owners of them have made disparaging remarks, and I would like to express my displeasure. So that's a good, perfect quest for Conan. This is exactly the sort of stuff he gets up to in his books. So this is gonna, this quest will take us a while to do. It's actually probably more accurate to think about it as several related quests. Uh, each district will find these uh, <clears throat> little items we can bring them back to her. And get paid. What? See, I don't think there's much else I can do here at the moment, so let's go ahead and go back to the uh, trade of blades. 
and get my uh, henchman. You know, unless you're playing with mods, you only get the one henchman, which is kind of a downer from, uh, if you come into this from, say, uh, Icewind Dale, where you can create a whole party, or even in Baldur's Gate, where you can have a bunch of, uh, you know, characters that you find and can recruit. So that makes it feel a little bit more limiting in some ways. I get that. Uh, let's see, who do we want to... We can stop at this merchant first and sell. See if we could sell some of our stuff we've been picking up. Uh, nobody wants to buy that trap. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's see who's available. We have Body Knot Glinkle. He's a sorcerer, a gnome sorcerer. You know, is, I really would like to find a cleric, and I think this is who we want here. <laughs> Lena. Linu. She's neutral. Uh, while rubbing a stain off her shirt, this young elf glances around with a cheerful visage. Yet there's a hardiness that belies her gentle exterior. So she is who I won't pick. Please now, I She's got a shield you too. To step on your candy bread right in oh, you're not the oh crap, skipped a couple. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think this is appropriate for Conan to have Linu as his companion. He likes to team up with uh, people like her. Yeah, let's see. You're not one of those dirty, underhanded, conniving thief types, are you? <laughs> oh, I don't like the rest of the description, but I am a thief, yes. That would pretty much sum me up, yes. Or lie, or say, sounds like you have something against these. I'll pick that one. Now, that doesn't answer my question. Well, I don't know. Should we be honest? I guess so. That pretty much, let's say I don't like the rest of the description. <laughs> oh, but not the kind who would steal the gold filings from your grandmother's teeth while she's still talking, no. <laughs> It's not like she needed them anymore. <laughs> no. I've got nothing but problems with irritating, despisable... Despisable? Thieves, ever since I left. But that's not important right now. Let me introduce myself. <laughs> no, tell me what happened. <laughs> Just say, okay. Uh, my name's Linu Lanarel, a devout priest of Sahanin. Moonbrow. Moonbow. Moonbow. <laughs> Seek to continue my adventures by hiring myself out as a healer. Perfect. So we could continue to question her, or we could just say, I'm looking for a good healer. Let's go with that. Tell her what we're doing. Looking for the creatures. She would love to work for me if we can agree upon a fair price. Goal in life to get through with a minimum of pain. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can talk her down a little bit. She wants 250 gold. I'm going to try to persuade her. Although I have crappy charisma, it probably won't work, but we'll try it. Nope. 250 is the final offer. And I've only got 244, so I'm going to have to sell something. I'd rather just get her into the party instead of having to come back, so. Let's see what I'm willing to sell. I don't want to sell anything too useful. I guess I could sell this potion of bless. There we go. You know what? I'll just sell all this. <laughs> I'll keep my bark skin. That might be useful. <clears throat> go ahead and get her in the party so I don't have to keep coming back. All right, looking for a good healer. Blah, 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 blah. Let's try to persuade her again. Failure. Here you go. <laughs> All right, so now I have my hench, henchwoman, Linu, there. There's not a whole lot I could do with her. I could tell her to heal me. Uh, some of this stuff seems like it would be cool, like the, uh, you know, like more actions. There's an inventory button. And you think, well, maybe I can play around with her inventory, upgrade her gear, or whatever. Nope, you can't do that. It's only the enhanced edition. I mean, <laughs> you didn't think they would actually enhance the the game, did you? <laughs> hey, well, they did make the resolution better and gave you that multiplayer. Put the multiplayer server back up, so... Just keep reminding yourself of that. You know, should I just get it out of the way? I mean, okay, this is what bugs me about the enhanced edition. Uh, I'm really peeved that they didn't put in any quality of life enhancements. Like this, this is uh, this game came out in 2002. It's uh, 2019. Where the hell's my sort button? Uh, why can't I sort anything? That, that's re that's ludicrous. Uh, that's uh, one of my pet peeves with this. And the other major pet peeve I have is with the uh, well, really with the uh, the, the bugs and the glitches. I, I was just having a hard time with the saving. You'd save a game, load it, and you'd be in a different place. Your henchman would be gone. You couldn't find her. Couldn't re replace her. Uh, so those are my two biggest pet peeves. Uh, but otherwise, I'm relatively happy. 
Although I have to say, if I were you, I might even just look for an original copy. <laughs> Other than the big resolution, if you're, if you're going to play multiplayer, I guess that's one thing. But if you don't care about the resolution, you might just pick up a... You'll see if you can find a box copy and get that running. It's It actually works just fine. <laughs> it's not one of those games where it's impossible to run in a Windows 10. But your mileage may vary. If you really like these, the enhanced edition, you know, let me know what you think. I <laughs> I feel like they just kind of took the stuff that the community had offered for free, rolled it into a package, and stuck a price tag on it. And then uh, to add insult to injury, you know, they always go after the abandonware sites that are trying to you know, uh, give it, give free access to the original. So it's kind of, a, I, I don't think they're bad guys necessarily, but you know, a lot of these uh, negative feelings I have would be assuaged if they had done more to enhance the game, which I don't feel like they did. Anyway, I don't want to keep harping on that. That's beam dog has nothing to do with Bioware in the original game. Let's see, Salter, can you help? We have lost family to the plague and escaped convicts in the Peninsula District. So we can see if we can help him. And if there's something you can do, please. So most of this is just asking for more information about the Peninsula District. Yeah, you know, kind of. I'm playing uh, some D and D with a couple of different groups now, Fifth Edition. And I've never really played a lot of tabletop role playing until, you know, actually this year. And it's <laughs> the funny thing is I don't know if it's just a quirk of these two groups. You know, it's two different groups of people, uh, but they all had this obsession with, like, interrogating every single person they come across. <laughs> like, this endless uh, need to check everything and stealth everywhere and, and talk people to death. I feel like, come on, let's just kill some damn rats already. <laughs> uh, so playing this game, I, I can sort of see some of that same impulse here. You know, like, all these questions. Like, you really want to ask every person you run across, you know, 10, 12 questions. Uh, I don't really care to do that. That's not what... That, that, that doesn't really interest me when I'm playing a computer game. It's, it's a little bit different, I guess, with Tabletop because the Dungeon Master can make it fun uh, with her uh, responses. Uh, you know, it's not so much fun with a computer game, but that's just my two cents. Okay, get me in there. <clears throat> Did you answer some questions about the peninsula? <laughs> See, so I was like, I need to know every damn thing before I walk in that gate. No, just open the gate. <laughs> Me won't kill. <laughs> Maybe I should have gone with that intellect of like a seven. <laughs> okay, here we go. We are in the peninsula district and... I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I have tried to go to jump straight to chapter one skipping the prelude and that is a recipe for pain and misery this is a forlorn woman it is a pleasure to speak with who are you i hope you're a guard we need more around here i'm sure the prisoners are safely locked away <laughs> see i'll look into it meanwhile i will rob your house <laughs> hey there's a scroll negative energy ray you don't need that if I had a negative energy race scroll, I wouldn't be... For She's got spirits! What you forlorn about? There's spirits right there. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can do that. Oh, great. Sorry. Linda's uh, already trying to open stuff for me. Let's see. Can I tell her, tell her not to... Let's see. Follow, stand your ground, guard me, special abilities. These are my abilities. Come on. I wanted to see if I could toggle her, uh... Let's see where is it? More actions, maybe this is it. Toggle search mode, toggle stealth mode. Toggle spell casting. Now, I don't see a way to tell her not to be trying to pick locks and stuff, so... <laughs> you know, wouldn't it be nice if this were an enhanced edition where they would have added some functionality to the to the NPCs. <laughs> uh oh, there we go. There's a badly wounded prisoner. Okay, what am I? Is that another one? Now, some of these enemies are just running around. Easy pickings. And it's all XP. 
Unless you don't get a, to land a blow, then I guess it's not. So anyway, you got several districts that we'll need to explore each one looking for the creatures, and there'd be lots of little quests you could do, side quests along the way, obviously. Now see what a true warrior looks like. Oh, this guy is really kicking ass this time. Love to see that. I do have Cleave. Boom, check it. Boom. So if you kill somebody with a blow, you instantly get to attack the person next to him. Once I get Great Cleave, then I can just do that, you know, sometimes three, four times in a row. It works really good with this big, big honking sword, because that does a lot of damage. Oh, unless you miss with it, then it doesn't do any damage. <laughs> Come on, Conan. Kill him. Boom, he's dead. There's some more over here. We just keep going. Master of Gods. Also getting attacks of opportunity. Let's watch this. This never really gets old to me. Hopefully he'll cleave here. No, nope, missed. Come on. Uh, boom. Cleave. Boom. <laughs> Almost killed him. I like to get the double and triple kills. See, this guy's a moderate level of challenge. Come on. Kill him. Kill, 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 kill. Alright, he's dead. <laughs> I think I might still be in combat. These these henchmen just keep running into the next mob, the next mob. Unless you tell them to back off. But the good news is if they die, it's not usually that big of a deal. You can resurrect them pretty. I don't think it costs anything. You just run back to the temple. What is she doing up there? She's stuck on some scenery? <laughs> yeah. She just stuck on some scenery. Of course, that would never happen in, in an enhanced ed edition. <laughs> they would obviously fix the AI before they would charge you for the same game you bought back in 2002. There's a ring. Light hammer. All right, so so far I've just kind of been running around killing stuff. I haven't really been talking too much about the, uh, the way combat mechanics work. So let's see if I can rectify that. Uh, so if I hit the space bar, I could pause. So that kind of makes this game like a real time with pause. Although to me, I rarely do this. As you can see, I can queue some stuff up. I could say, go ahead and hit the power attack mode. And then attack him and then him. So do I click on this other one? <laughs> I guess, can I, I see, can, did I speak wrongly? Can I not queue up an attack? I guess I can only do one thing at a time. I guess I could probably do something like take a pot and then attack. No? Okay. Okay, so what's the secret here? Is it shift? Is it control? I know there's some way to queue up actions, folks. So. Well, there we go. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about these uh, mechanics. Uh, so... With the uh, third edition rules, remember, it's not about Thacko anymore. You want to get as high of attack roll as possible. This is based on those D20 dice. So if you look carefully at what's happening... Oh, and there's also the initiative roll, which determines who gets to attack first. Now, let me go ahead and hit this guy, or not hit him, and I'll show you the stats there. Okay, so we can pause and look at the stats. That's why I love this game. It, you know, throws all the math at you. You're not always looking at this, but if you want to see, like, what exactly happened... You can work it out mathematically. So let's see. Uh, we paused it there. <clears throat> Escape prisoner attacks Linu. Missed. He rolled a four. He doesn't have any proficiency bonus. Uh, then I got an attack of opportunity with my power attack on, plus the sneak attack I had as a rogue, and the fact that there's a they're being attacked by more than one person. And so my hit roll was ten, plus four, my strength bonus. And the, I think I got a bonus up here, thanks to uh, Linu must have cast a bless or something on me. So I had a 14, which hit. And then if we go down a little bit, we see how much damage that did, which was 23 physical. I guess that killed him outright. Got some experience points. And then uh, should be a cleave there. Yeah, attempts cleave, so that missed with a roll of a 9. <laughs> so I'm not going to obviously do that for every 
every turn, but you know, I love the fact you could pause the game and see exactly what happened dice-wise and work out your strategy from there. So I'll go ahead and shrink this back down. You know, sometimes you're not doing any damage or you think you're missing too much or whatever it is. It's helpful to take a look at those uh, that log there to see what, what was going on. Oh, there's a bunch of prisoners here. <laughs> One thing you have to be careful of is not to move away when you're attacking somebody, because then they'll get a free free attack on you. And also, it doesn't automatically attack. See, it just kind of freezes there. So sometimes, you have to be mindful, make sure this little attack icon's going. Be down here. To, this is the gang leader, so this might actually be a pretty tough fight. Well, then I'm getting all these sneak attacks on him. The new took, uh, took uh, aggro off me. Come on, hit this gang leader. <laughs> Man, it sucks when you miss with these big weapons because they're so slow. They whacked him with a solid 16 points. Let's see what his challenge rate Overpowering, so. He's got some kind of dex bo uh, dexterity bonus going, but I'm still doing a decent job. Really liking Lanou here. She's just completely awesome. Alright, we got him down. This was a. Sort of a mini boss, I guess. Has a heavy crossbow. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna. Inventory will be full here before you know it. Don't really want to get too burdened. Let's see. It's hard for me to resist opening up every crate and box I, can, <laughs> I see, even though, as you can see, it almost always just has one coin. Uh, one of the big criticisms of this, of this game that I think is justified is that so much of the treasure sucks. You know, you'll find a chest, you'll have to detect a trap on it, disable the trap on it, pick the lock on it, or bash it, open it, and it's like one gold. <laughs> and that happens almost every time, it seems like. Hardly ever any decent treasure. And so there's actually people that have made mods that give you better treasure. I think it's called like Decent Treasure Mod, <laughs> or something like that, uh, just to give you some idea. Uh, so if you're not careful, if you're kind of OCD like I am about the treasures and the loot, you might actually spend more of your time just dealing with your inventory and opening up chests and crates and boxes than you really should. It's okay to just pass them by. It's hardly ever anything in there I worth looking at anyway. <clears throat> Let's see. I was trying to make my way safely home when those brutes found me. What are you doing in the streets? I'm a butler for Lady Tanglebrook. Let's see. Are you there? Are there not enough guards to keep you safe? What do you know about the prison? Do you need an escort to the district gates? Would you? I was thinking I'd never make it. Okay, so we can get us a little easy quest here. Just escort this guy back. Let me guess there's going to be an ambush. <laughs> Maybe not. We'll see. Where's the gates? Up there. Looks like an easy quest. Can we get him back? What's considered uh, far enough? I guess he's got to go all the way back here. <laughs> Alright, looks like we did help him. And look, our alignment shifted three points towards the good, and we got 62 experience, po uh, experience points. Uh, so that helps. This guy's already level three. All right, let's see what other trouble we can get into here. Need another potion. <laughs> yeah, you see this situation. Like, should I run down there and <laughs> open up those chests? Or am I in much too big of a hurry? I want to get into some, some action here. You know, I think I've been calling this the Peninsula District this whole time, but I, <laughs> I think it's the it's the docks. Durr. So here we're trying to rescue or get these prisoners taken care of. Here's some more escape prisoners. I want to. Before we end the video, get to the first creature, first water Davian creature. I think that should be enough to give you a pretty good impression of what the rest of the game is going to be like. 
I do have a later character I could show you, but he's, he's not a whole lot different than this guy. He's a, just a straight-up fighter. But you might want to see some of the other areas. Okay, let's see. Can I get... Check the journal here to see what we're supposed to be doing. There's been a prison break. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's something neat here. If you look for these plague victim pyres, if you get your torch, you can light these pyres and get 25 XP for doing that. Pretty neat. Yeah, this is kind of fun. It says uh, weapon equipped as a two-handed weapon. So I guess it might be possible to Equip that like a bastard sword, not sure. Oh, here we go, here's another gang leader. <laughs> boom, boom, love it! <laughs> oh man, I'm really, I'm really enjoying this character. Conan the Sumerian, he is, uh... He is quite a good fighter. What happened there? He, see, he just left combat, why? <laughs> it's like, he heard me complimenting him, he decides to be a goof. <laughs> There we go. Come on, get to him. Ah, oh, Glenu, uh, Glenu healed herself. I'm missing with those sneak attacks. It's not cool. Come on. Boom! 17 points. Very difficult. Sneaking attacks not working. I haven't even used my rage yet. If we get into a big group of uh, lower level creatures, I'll try that out. It does make me do more damage, but I have a lower uh, AC. So you don't want to do it if you're, if you're in danger of getting, <laughs> you know, getting one-shotted. So let's see, that was the key to what? Prison key. Okay, so now we can get into the prison and start dealing with the prisoners. I am the law. I'm kind of glad I picked the, uh, the docks for our first... Uh, mission here because that feels to me like the most the most Conan like of districts <laughs> all right he is down is there any... usually more than one you know I forgot the other thing I didn't like about this enhanced edition because <laughs> you know I want to nitpick it to death right uh, even though I'm having a good time with it uh, I really wish they had made it so that if you've already searched a crate or a chest, it would it would show. Like make it instead of a blue outline, just not have an outline, or just show it open, uh, so I don't have to keep going back. Because I'm about I'm absent-minded as all get out. I don't know. I can't remember which crates I've opened already. <laughs> I shouldn't have to remember that. You know, this is a that would have been an easy easy enhancement. I don't think it would have been that hard to program that. Okay, got him down. I guess she's activating her power. Her power attack. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I think she's a really good henchman. Henchwoman. <laughs> Hench person. <laughs> I don't know. Henchman's not too uh, politically correct no matter what, right? I guess it's better than minion. Or lackey. There we go. Nice little group. Let's put on the power attack. Or the rage. Rage! Didn't activate. What the? <coughs> Alright, that didn't work out as planned. Let's see if we can find another group and test out the rage. The Berserker of Rage. I'm not sure what this little room is. Alright, here's a good little group. Let's see if we can turn on the rage. Ah, we're raging. Now, can we get an attack off before Lino does it all? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So let's see. Attacks. Hit. Damage 13 physical. Doesn't spell it out there, but I think the uh, rage gives me. I know it gives me some extra uh, 
Let's see, what is the, the perk? Uh, plus four morale, bonus, strength, and constitution. So you take two penalty to armor class, but you're doing a lot more damage and you have more uh, more health, at least until it wears off. Still active. Let's see if I can unlock this chest. I don't have a very high uh, thief ability. Nope, failure. It looks like I do have one set of lock picks. <laughs> yeah, okay, she bashed it open. Now, I was playing this with Gotrick, and we don't know. If you bash open a chest, does that destroy some of the treasure? You know, I didn't didn't bother to look that up. It's just kind of a mystery. You know, some games will punish you for that. Others don't care. So if you know the answer, please share it in the comments. I'd like to know. Let's see, do we have any locked trap chests? <laughs> yeah, this is what I spent, I feel like I spend most of my time doing. Making sure it's not trapped. Okay, it doesn't look trapped. What is that? Knock. Uh, so fortunately those weren't locked. There's a little treasure there too. Bada boom. Uh, but I hate games where you're just always fussing with the inventory. I shouldn't say I hate the game, I just, <laughs> I hate that little aspect of it. Alright, I need to get into the prison. I don't know why I'm wandering around back there. Let's get in there. I think that must have been the guardhouse I was just in. I do have a, the official guidebook up there. <laughs> well, I don't know why I'm not looking at it. Yeah, it must have been... There we go. Here we go. Alright. Getting attacked already. I love. Whoa! <laughs> I didn't even see what it was. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, lady. Oh, I didn't accidentally heal. Okay, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but uh, okay. She healed me. Let's see. What do we have? Oh, crap! <laughs> that was trapped. You know how I know that. <laughs> I was just detecting the trap by stepping on it. Alright, let's see if there's any more. Sometimes it just doesn't work. I don't have a really high uh, search score. Don't see any more. Let's just grab the stuff. Prison log book. A little bit of flavor there, I guess. There's probably a clue buried in there somewhere. Alright, dear. I'm getting to it. Man, gotta be a way to keep her from doing that, huh? <laughs> Maybe not. I guess she can bash on it. Now, is she going to keep on bashing even after I leave here? I have to call her back. Let's see. Follow me. Guard me. You have a little bit of control over your minions. This, this definitely doesn't have a very high uh, lock picking at this point. All right, dear. I'm getting to Takasi. Oh, not sure. Does it tell me what the odds are? Oh, I got that one. Good. Let's see. This looks. Oh, there's no enemies in here. Okay. <laughs> and a little treasure. Let's see. Detect traps on those. Not seeing anything, but I'm gonna save it just in case, because these these traps will kill you faster than just about any enemies will. If you can't pick it, just bash it. Couldn't right, get into either one of those. <laughs> I can't even. Wow. Okay, let me try the lock picks on these. When I get another level, I'm definitely going... Well, not even the lockpicks would work. And as soon as I get another level of Rogue, I'm going to make sure to bump up my open locks. Must have a pretty low roll on that. 
failure every damn time. So it's got a, I need a 22, I rolled a 16. So I guess it's possible, I, if I kept at it, I might eventually get it open, but... But did she bash it open for me? <laughs> she bashed it open anyway. I got another healing kit. You know, those healing kits are useful if you don't want to rest, or in a spot where you can't rest, or you just don't want to bother. Oh, I forgot about this trap. I want to test that out if I get a chance. See, there's a door lever there. Oh, that's handy. <laughs> yeah, that'll save a little time. You want to run in there and grab those potions. Let's see, just like it didn't do them for all of them, though. All right, dear. Yeah. I'm getting to it. All right, there's some. Uh... Let's see if we can attack these guys. Oh. I'll tell you one thing though, getting those extra two levels at the start made a huge difference. I was in here before trying to do a level one character. <laughs> Man, I was just getting my butt annihilated. It was not fun. This definitely feels a lot, <laughs> a lot more uh, efficient. Okay, let's see. Does he have anything? There's another chest. Let's see. Is it booby trapped? All right, dear. I'm getting to it. I wonder if this unlocking speeds up as you get better All at right, dear. better at I'm it. To it. I'm all done here. She's gonna keep doing that. That's just gonna drive me insane. <laughs> This guy it just amazes me. There's no way to like toggle that where she doesn't toggle search mode, stealth mode, inventory. I can't mess with her inventory. Handle traps, toggle spell casting. No. Whoa, holy cow, that's a lot of mobs. Go ahead and activate my barbarian rage again. Oh, it didn't activate. I guess it takes several seconds to work. Yep, I got a trap chest behind me. Try to do the power attack. This will make me miss even more, though. But if I do connect, it's pretty much a one shot. Oh, we got a, another gang leader here. Boom! Critical hit. You know, another nitpick. It would have been nice <laughs> if I could just toggle this power attack and just keep it on instead of having to always click it every time I want to use it. Okay, let's see. Can I disable the trap? Maybe he's better at disarming traps than he is at opening locks. <laughs> Success? Not even possible. <laughs> So obviously one level of uh, rogue is nothing to uh, get excited about. There's a guard dog in there. Hey boy! <laughs> That's a proper guard dog there. What breed do you think that is? He's challenging. Where do these guys come from? Ooh, 26 sneak attack. You know, it's worth taking that point of, uh, taking that level of rogue just to get these sneak attacks. Oh, look at that, 20. <laughs> I like all the little touches they put in here. Okay. Alright, there we go. There's our passageway. I want to get to the end of this dungeon. Don't necessarily need to kill everything in the dungeon. Wait, stairs down. <laughs> Main door. 
I'm going about this all wrong. I told you, I'm not the best when it comes to uh, directions. Right, let's go down in here. <clears throat> Wait, who's this? Oh, I remember this guy. Pull that lever. <laughs> You're not with the prisoners, are you? No, I had to fight my way through them. Thank goodness you've come, then. They've been going from cell to cell, killing us guards. I think I'm the last one left. Let's see. Get out of here, then. The people in those cells are my friends. Abandon the mirror if you want, stranger. But I'm here for some vengeance. Let's see. Where's the head? Jailer up to... He was torturing some of the former guards on the bottom level. Why was he doing that? Kept talking about cutting us, getting inside our heads. Some of our guys came out of the looking like zombies. Okay, I think I know what's going on. Uh, the pits. The door's locked. Where they're held up. I need supplies with their storerooms. The north and south. Uh, that's all I need to know. Okay, wait here. Okay, Emmernick, we'll wait here, and I think I can rest in here. Yep. Back up to full charge. And so he said the storerooms are to the north and south. Those are probably those. Let's go to check that out. So I think we have to use the lever again. All right. There's a guard. I guess he saw me. I think if you sneak up on him, you get a free sneak attack. They don't see you. Oh, he's dead. Got my cleave. <laughs> I walked in there. Walked up just in time to get the cleave. Oh, missed. Well, it's a party now. got me down to 23 health. Man, that's a lot of mobs. Cleave. I don't have great cleave yet. Come on, Kudan. Alright, took out that little group. Let's see, is this the storeroom? I locked myself in here with these guys. <laughs> that was smart. Ah, they're wimps. Moderate. And a moderate amount of cash. Okay, I don't even know what... The, that obviously wasn't one of the storerooms. Maybe this must be the storeroom. Oh, great. That's <laughs> slowed. <laughs> well, at least it happened out here. Just wait till it wears off. <laughs> Let's see, as we're waiting for that to wear off, is there... There it goes, it wore off. Ooh, look at this. Big ol' healthy group. And activate my rage and charge in. <laughs> hey, you got a pissed off Conan coming in here. How dare you guard a storeroom? <laughs> ah, yes. Alright, so this is clearly the storeroom. The question is is there anything worth having in here? Potion of Cure Serious Wounds. Lock chest. <laughs> She's gonna try to break it open. <laughs> no, I actually got that one. Potion of cure light wounds. Yeah, I'm not super impressed with the storeroom. Let's get out of here. Damn. A little tricky sometimes to navigate around everything. Alright, let's see if we can get to the 
main part of this level. She stares up. I'm trying to figure out how to get down to the pits. There's a bunch of prisoners over there. Let's see if we can sneak up on them. Sneak attack! There we go. What a nice. Oh, this guy activated a bark skin potion. Wow. Like these guys are attacking me with those giant fried turkey legs. <laughs> Oh, damn, they're gonna kill me. Jeez. What happened? Ah, oh, what? What the hell killed me? Okay, well, that's never winter nice for you. It just, just like that, you can die. That's why you gotta get crazy about just saving it all the time. Well, I was pretty low health going in there, so... Got a decent amount of loot piling up here. That's one of the advantages, I guess, of having medium armor. You don't have to worry about that weighing you down. A little bit left over for loot. Okay, let's try this again. Stealth mode. Won't do the power attack. Must be... I think I saw a mage in the mix there somewhere. Alright, sneaking up. Boom, one down. One of these guys is the spellcaster. I hear him in there. Be nice to kill his buddies. Boom. Before I have to face him. Damn! Fireball! What? Alright, heal up. Damn, that didn't do much. I guess I'm already past the point of cure light wounds being, <laughs> being great. All right, got to get in here and attack this sorcerer. Miss. Perfect. <laughs> Why did it cancel my attack? Twelve. All right. Just me and you now, sorcerer. Very difficult. So you got AC increased, invisible damage resistance. Good lord! Damn! You see what I'm talking about, though? This quick save? Like, where the heck is that? That's not where I saved it. Or maybe it is. Never mind. <laughs> Alright, let's see. I'm gonna need a little extra something-something to get through this fight, I think. What do I have? I'm pretty sure I got a bark skin. <laughs> I can't see the bark skin. I'm not really getting hit by anything but the magics. So maybe I should just go in there with my rage on. I have rage. Get in here and kill this sorcerer before he can kill me. Where'd he go? Where's the sorcerer? <laughs> oh, no. You know, where the, where did that sorcerer go is not what you want to hear yourself asking when you're in these situations. There he is. Alright, yeah, I took getting a bunch of attacks of opportunity, but I really just want to kill this guy before he can fireball. Like that. Stay on the sorcerer! It's hard to hit, too. Come on, you can do it. Oh, even the sneak attacks won't hit him. And he killed my cleric. Alright, I don't know if I'll be able to win this. He is... I might have to work out some other tactics to get into him. Man, look at him. He's just eviscerating me. Try one more. I guess he can just do that burning hands forever. He's badly wounded. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. If I could just kill him, those other two could probably be easy. You know, 
I'm gonna try this a different way. <laughs> I forgot I had that trap. Let's try out the trap. Who knows? Maybe that'll make some kind of difference. Make sure to stealth out here. Let's get our potion going. Bark skin. Yeah, there's our trap. Let's see if we can get that trap set up. No, oh, I can't use that item. Alright, I don't know why, I just... <laughs> I'm going to have to set it. Nope, can't use this item. Well, is it because I'm in combat or what? Anyway. I've got a cutting plan for the sorcerer. And that is kiting. Alright, let's see. Let's see if we can... The hard part is getting her not to rush in. Let's see, can I just get her to stand there? Stand your ground, good. I'll see if I can sneak in here. Get him to waste to... What is he doing? So he's invisible, so I could just wait around for that to wear off. Like so. Let's see if we can run out of here, run around the corner. Cut off his line of sight. <laughs> It would probably help a lot if I could take out some of these little guys. Oh, what the heck lowered my strength? Damn, down to 13. Somebody must have cursed me. All right, my dude, guard me, guard me. All right, got some of them down. That will help. Back away. Looks like that whatever that was wore off. Good. Alright, let's see. Maybe that thinned them out a little bit. I'd like to get right up behind that sorcerer and just hit him with a sneak attack. Ah, oh, I hate that shit. Excuse my language. He's just doing a fireball. Come on, get this. I really need to kill these guys quick so I can get over there and get that sorcerer. Alright, he's down. There's the sorcerer. Hard to hit. And it's... Oh, how many of those does he have? They already used two fireballs. He's just casting that... What the heck? He just got infinite burning hands? That's kind of stupid. Yeah, he's just going to keep on casting that. I can't even hit him. Alright, Jesus. Oh, obviously, this is supposed to be a very challenging fight. I don't know what else I can do, really, to even it out, either. That's my original strategy of having her wait here. Have to kite some more of these guys out. I definitely can't take on more than this sorcerer. Come on, you. There we go. Yeah, he's hitting me with something that takes my strength away. She took it off. Come here, prisoner, prisoner. Ah, oh, she's charging in. Great. <laughs> uh. We've got to get this sorcerer. Damn, I just cannot believe the damage that does. I don't know, man. It's just... Maybe I have to get another level before I'll be able to deal with this guy. He just casting those spells just over and over and over. I can't kill him quick enough. I'll just try a straight up rush. It doesn't help that he's invisible. And he... There he is. Come on, sneak attack. If I could interrupt him at all, that would help. Alright, at least I'm hitting him now. Come on, come on, don't... 
Now I'm having to do the whole potion just to survive and take another potion route, see? I think this guy would miss occasionally. Damn, he's only he's gotta be almost dead. Come on! Kill him! Hit him! Ah! Damn, he's still got my frickin' henchman. But at least I got him. Alright. <laughs> that was way harder than I feel like it should have been, but I I think I might have gotten an upgrade on my armor though. Let's see. Scale mail, four and four. Nope, <laughs> doesn't make any difference at all. <laughs> oh great, at least I can sell it. So what can I do now? I can, uh, to get her back, I'll have to portal back to the town, or run back to town. As long as we're here and she's not here though, I can try to disable the trap. Success not possible. I'm pretty close to the next level, though. <clears throat> Uh-oh. <coughs> Maybe I should have saved it. <laughs> See it. Yeah, these guys are easy enough. Boom. All right, well, if I'm having that hard of a time with the henchman, I don't even want to think about trying to do this without one, so... <laughs> Let's, I'll just show you what it looks like, too. Second portal back. She should be here. I can still feel my death. May I join you again? Sure. And uh, while I'm here, I can sell my stuff to Arabeth. Welcome. Maybe even uh, buy some new stuff. The hell with this trap! I guess I have to have some points and set trap to be able to do to do that. It would make sense. Sell, sell, <laughs> sell, 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 sell. What is that? Lily's token. Ah. That's nice of her. Let's see, I've got a thousand gold, that's probably still not enough to upgrade anything. Alright, I am going to uh, just zap back, just to save some time. I shall rest first. Uh, ordinarily I'd want to run back to save the 50 gold. But we are on borrowed time. <coughs> Alright, rested back up, let's get in there, pay the 50 gold. <laughs> All right, we are back. And I'm hoping that was the... That was the worst fight in this part, because I don't think I can handle much worse than that. Let's see, how do I get down? There's got to be some way to get down a level, though. Must be here. That's the stairs back up. Stairs down this way. Get you. <laughs> That little thing called direction. Oh, go back. Let's see that. I'm just double checked to make sure I searched all these bodies because I don't remember getting any decent treasure. Eh, maybe there wasn't any. I'll come back for those chests on the way out. Maybe I'll level up and have a a chance to actually open them. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. There's some more escaped prisoners. It's really the magic you usually have to worry about. There's only so many fire, uh, burning hands and fireballs or whatever the heck that was. And it's going to be taking you down to two hit points. I assume I don't really have any resistance to flames. Oh, I hate this level. <laughs> Look at the, the... Look how confusing this is. Ugh. 
I guess on, for me it's a perk. I think some people would complain. I like the flatness of the levels. You know, nowadays they'd want to have you going up and down and twisting and turning. But all these uh, levels are fairly flat. Oh! Jeez. <laughs> yeah, it's really helpful when you notice the trap right before you stand on it. What this stunned? I guess that's just a time waster. A little bit of damage. Okay. I really want to get to the creature, if I possibly can do that. Because it's a really fun fight. It's hard. But I think it's well done. Let's see. These are just, uh... You know, even these guys are moderate level. <laughs> I think I've got the violence turned up. That's why you're seeing these these guts everywhere. You could scale that back if you were if your kids playing this. You don't want to <laughs> see blood and gore everywhere. You can turn that off. Let's see where's the setting for that. <laughs> There's even a violence password you can set. <laughs> you know, I don't think your kid's gonna get that scarred from. The violence in this game, though. All right. Escape prisoner. There's too much combat in this game. Who <laughs> says that? The story arcs weren't deep enough. The character development just wasn't there. <laughs> Why can't I marry Lenu? And I hope you can see how much that cleave is paying off. You can, and the the sneak attacks. I didn't expect that to be as useful as it's been. I mean, that's pro. There we go. There we go. Leveled up. <laughs> Oh man, this game makes you really appreciate it when you level up. Let's go ahead. Oh, maybe I have to fight this before I can level up. Come on, die prisoner. You can level up. Okay, it's kind of weird. I can't. Is it pause? I don't know. Let's go ahead and do the another level of rogue. Select ability to increase by one. Oh, that stinks. I can only raise it by one. Well, I guess I could, uh, what do I want to raise next? Probably my strength. And what else? Get some skills. Alright, disable trap. Put some points in that. And, uh, what's the other one? Open lock. <laughs> yes. Uh, parry wouldn't hurt either. Uh, search. I want to be able to search for traps better. Is that everything? Could stick a point and set trap. Eh, I'll do some more searches. Okay, so maybe that will help some. Be able to open up more chests, get more loot. Let's right, see, where was I going here? I think I got turned around yet again. What is this? Gloves of the Minstrel. Only usable by bards. All right, continuing on our mission. All right, dear. I'm getting to it. <laughs> this guard dog. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this guard dog's about to kill me. Why does it always want to seem to kill me right after I level? I don't know if there's how much level scaling is at work here. Hopefully not too much, because I really don't like level scaling. Can't rest. Might have to back out of here and find a spot to rest if I can't get my health back up. I'm going to waste all my potions. Ooh, that's a pretty big fight in there. Still thin. Oh, 
wasn't a big deal. Got to rest, though. Alright, let me just back out of here, finally. <laughs> Gotta keep going back until I can rest. That is a healing thing. Maybe I'll just use that. There we go. That worked. So I guess that's the spot where those he healing kits come in handy when you're too right. too lazy to go look for it. a uh, yeah. a spot where you can rest. All right, dear. I'm getting to it. Still failed. Oh, it's a mystery to me why they made these things so hard to open. What does that sound? I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> Let's see, Lanuke. Get over here. Oh, it's another sorcerer. Maybe I could sneak up on him. 16 points of damage. Boom. Rage on. Yep, keep attacking him. Because that stupid. If he starts doing that back to back fireball, burning hands, whatever that is. God, why do I keep exiting combat? God. Kill him. Alright, a lot easier that time, though. Levels up. <laughs> Leveling up does make a difference. Whoa, double axe plus one. Oh, I can't even wield that. It's an exotic weapon. Okay, let's see. Can open <laughs> uh, Great one. Lock. I want to lock it, open it. Roll that for a mace. Let's see, can I get lucky this time and unlock it? Victory will be ours! Nope. My guess is they wouldn't put the the main mob behind a, that hard of a door, so let's just keep moving. It's always satisfying after a, you nearly get your butt kicked. Just mow down like four or five enemies back to back. Is the the pits? Oh Jesus! Where are you, Lino? And get over here, please get over here. Where are you? She might be stuck on some scenery. I can't believe they haven't hit me yet. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Take the potion. There we go. Wow. That was amazing. I don't know where my henchman is. Where the hell are you? Why is she... She's still ba bashed on that stupid door. Oh my god. Can't even get her over here. <laughs> oh, come on. Wow. Oh, there she is. Okay. Where's she? The hell is she going? <laughs> she really wants to get through that door. Wow. All right. This looks like an important place. Yeah, these are some names. For honor and glory! Deal with these. This guy's got a double axe. Overpowering. 28 points of damage. He's damaging me, though. Come on, do I have a better healing pot than that? Yeah, I got these moderate ones. There we go. <laughs> That's more like it. He's gonna kill my... Killed my henchman again, though. Now it's my turn to die, more than likely. He's badly wounded if I could just land an attack on him. Alright. 
Come on. There, got him. I'm just a man like any other. I'm hoping it's one of the water dated creatures, huh? I know not much about that. Something ate his brain. What's inside him then? <laughs> You're not worth my time. Die, grunt. So, should we kill him? What would Conan do? You know, he'd just let him go? I don't know. Guards into zombies. Is there any way to rescue him? Eh. I never know, quite know what to do here. Guess I just let him go. The unfortunate thing is I have to go back and yet again because uh, to get my henchman. If I'm barely surviving this without her, with her, I should say, I'm definitely not going to make it far without her, so I definitely need to do that. Well, we could try our luck with some of these chests again. Really hoping for some decent treasure because I'm already having to spend hundreds of gold just zapping back to get my inch woman. Right, boom, boom, boom. Nothing, no treasure here worth a, worth anything, that's for sure. I'll go ahead. The Lair of the Devourer. Yes, yeah, that's the final room. Okay, let me go get the henchman, then we'll try that out, and that'll be the uh, that'll be enough for this video I'm thinking all right one more time get her back <laughs> well, let's go ahead and rest so I can get my uh, rage back all right rage is back so my stuff Sell, sell, sell. Let's see. Yeah, let me sell that so that's not a... If it lets you sell it, you know it's not a quest item. <laughs> At least that's, that's the assumption I'm operating with. Okay, looking good. Uh, 1,900 gold. Can I get anything decent? Doesn't look like there's anything worth having for that amount of money. Could get some braces of dexterity almost. <coughs> <coughs> some some arrows? <laughs> nope. Well, hell. The cloak of fortification, cloak of movement. Yeah, still don't have enough uh, gold to really buy anything useful. So let's just get back in there and see if we have any chance in <laughs> hell. <laughs> Of finishing this level off. See that? Did I check that chest already? Yep. Alright, well, let's go in there. Uh, so I guess explain the fight. So what's going to happen here is there's that little mind devourer thing. I'm going to fight it and every time I defeat it it's going to jump off and get out another one of these guards. So one way to kind of cheese this fight is to kill all these uh, former guards first. <coughs> but maybe it won't be that tough. Yeah, there we go. So there's the Devourer. Intellect Devourer. So I didn't get a... Sometimes you can get a, a strike or two on it, but... Not that time. There it is again. That's going to attack a little bit. Good. Get some damage on it. It's impossible challenge rating. Oh, what the heck? I'm stunned. How long is that going to last? Really wish it had a cooldown on it. That would be the kind of thing that you'd think an enhanced edition would have. <laughs> Alright, it's gone. Yeah, hell, the new might be able to do this all by herself. Oh, it's barely injured. I guess it heals up every time it does that, too. Stop! 
destroy this body. <laughs> this, this is how big people stock. Better take my healing potion. All right, come on, we can do this. We can do it. Oh, there's one more. <laughs> Love to see that critical hit. I think I'll activate my rage. There we go. Let's finish this guy off. You know, this is where the game just gets really fun to me. This is a tough fight. Just looking at those rolls, you're just hoping to get lucky. Oh, what did he do? I'm stunned. Come on, Lanu, you can do it. You can do it. Oh man, I wish the stun would go away. I thought when you had Barbarian was raging, he couldn't get stunned, but <laughs> just making that up. Come on, we're both stunned. There we go. Sneak attack. He's still just barely injured, though. Oh, this could take a while. <laughs> we're both just gonna keep getting stunned like this. Confused. Yes, I'm confused. What's it doing? Man. There we go. Come on. Come on. He's still injured. A thoroughly repugnant creature. <laughs> yes, he is repugnant. What is he casting on me? I guess I don't know the name of the spell. Oh, he's got a bolt attack. I love that getting that sneak attack in on him, though. Badly wounded. Come on, we can do it. Why am I just standing there? Damn it! I don't know what he's doing to cancel my attack every time. I want to get the finishing blow on him. <laughs> Snap out of it! There we go. Alright, come on, come on. Oh, he missed! Goddess, take you now. Get this thing! Sneak attack! Oh, God! <laughs> it's badly wounded. It's gotta be. Can't have that much health left. Oh, and he missed again! Oh, come on, Conan! Uh, I guess I got a blast. I got that bark skin. That's not going to help me hit any. I do have a bless potion here. Should have taken this at the start of the battle, but better late than never. Maybe that'll help me with the saving throws on those that mental thing he keeps doing, too. Oh, now we're hitting him. Near death. Come on. Quit canceling my attack. Oh. It's near death, I wonder. Oh, just any hit could do it. Four. Ah. Come on, what's he got left? You can do it. You can do it. Don't die on me. Ah, should I do the potion? Yeah, I better grab the pot. I don't want to die now. Come on. God! <laughs> and he is down. <laughs> and he had a devourer's brain. Woo! Uh, okay, I'm exhausted. <laughs> but we did get through to the first, uh, you know, the first creature. And see, from here, I would just go run back to Erebeth, give her the brain, and we would be uh, basically done with the first district. And then we could go on to the uh, the Peninsula District, the Beggars uh, beggars Quarter, whatever they call that, and there's Black Lake District, and that's just all Chapter 1. And we got Chapter 2, and, and so on, and so forth. Uh, so anyway, this is a good character. I'm really having fun with him. A couple of tough spots here and there, but we made it work. I'll just uh, quickly show you this other character. He's uh, my character, Felix. I've been uh, playing with him and Gotrick. Uh, Felix and Gotrick from the Warhammer books kind of made some characters based around them. 
So he's just a straight up fighter. I didn't multi-class him at all. Keeping it simple. He's got an AC of 25. And let's see where's his uh, feats. Yeah, I gave also gave him cleave and I gave him dodge. Uh, which isn't required for mobility and string a spring attack. Push one damage. Uh, he's also got some improved uh, critical. I really focused him around the long sword. He could knock down people. Uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty good character. I think this is maybe chapter three, chapter two, chapter three. We're in port last. Nowhere near the end. Yeah, we've just been playing every now and then. But, you know, the game doesn't necessarily get any easier. He can still... I made, We made the mistake with these guys of not going through the tutorial, so we're two levels behind probably where we should be. Uh, but it's still playable. You don't want it to be too easy when you have a partner anyway. Let's just see if we can get him into combat a little bit, and then we'll... There's a troll. This will be a good... <laughs> so this challenge rating is moderate, and he can regenerate. So if we keep missing, I guess we'll be able to rebuild. Let's see if we can knock him down. There's some penalties with knock down if the creature's bigger than you or smaller than you. It doesn't matter. He is dead. So again, we can get into the rolls there. Look at that. But anyway, let's wrap it up. I'll give you my, my take on <laughs> Neverwinter Nights. Uh, just in terms of, let's not talk about Beam Dog and the Enhanced Edition. Putting that aside, you know, all I'll say about that is, yeah, I like the I like the better resolutions. And they did make some, they did do some nice things. Uh, I'm not going to criticize them too much, but my big beef with them is, I feel like it's such a missed opportunity. You know, you get this this game, you have the rights to it. Why not just go go all out? Uh you know, at least I don't, I don't. I understand why they wouldn't want to redo the artwork and all that, and all those assets. But you know, they could have added some quality of life improvements, like the sort, as a big one for me. Little things like being able to see the chest you've opened already. Uh, that would have been nice. Wouldn't have taken too much to do that. Uh, so I just basically, I'm not really feeling that the enhancements are enough to. I feel like they could have done a lot more. Put it, put it, put it that way. Uh, but just never winter nights itself. I think it's a really great game. Uh, wh whatever you think about this initial campaign, you know, there's there's plenty of mods, plenty of other campaigns. Uh, you know, just about any criticism I could have about this game could be fixed if I was willing to download the appropriate uh, user mod uh, from the modding community. Uh, but again, putting that aside, and just playing the bare bones, playing the campaign, uh, I I don't like just having the henchman. And I especially don't like the limited control I have over the henchmen. I feel like at the very least I should be able to play with their inventory and stuff. Now, granted, they fixed all this in the later version. So, uh, but for this game, that was an annoyance. Uh, also, uh, <clears throat> we'd like to have more characters. You know, kind of like a game where you have a full a full crew. I always feel a little bit isolated when it's just me or one one henchman, one minion. Uh, that said, if you can find a group of players willing to. Uh, you know, play with you, that, of course, goes away and it becomes a different sort of game at that point. Uh, the, the combat is fun. Uh, you do have sort of an ability to pause and issue some orders, as though you can see it's a little bit tricky. <laughs> uh, I assume it might be easier if I was a, a mage, for example, lining up some spells or something. Uh, I don't really ever play a mage or a sorcerer, so I'm not really sure what that's like uh, in this game. Uh, I do feel like I spend an, inor an inordinate amount of time uh, detecting traps, disarming traps, opening chests, looking, you know, for one piece of gold, two pieces of gold. Uh, they really kind of screwed that up. Uh, I'm not going to keep saying you could fix it with a mod because you get, get the point uh, <laughs> by now. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, there's a lot to like, and I think that's why the nitpicky stuff tends to come to the surface. When you, when you like a game a lot and you're just kind of getting annoyed by little things, or little things kind of become a big thing is because you're investing so much time, you're so focused on it, and you don't like being distracted from the fun by this uh, this little stuff. Uh, so all in all, I would say great game, definitely worth uh, seeking out. Uh, I think you might just as well find it, if you could find an original box copy, not too hard to get up and running, and you'll like to play with all the stuff that comes with it. You know, Make sure you get the complete version. Um, you know, Other than that, 
you know, I'm saying, you know, great, <laughs> great game. What else do you want me to say? It's not as much fun as uh, Baldur's Gate, or one or two, in my opinion. Uh, Icewind Dell, you know, maybe about the same level of uh, fun there. Uh, but anyway, I remember when I first played this game back in the day, I didn't like it as much as those previous games, and I thought a lot, even though it was in 3D, you could spin it around and all that, I still thought in some ways it's a step down uh, from some of those previous uh, games. Uh, but anyway, still a very solid title, one of the best of the early modern RPGs. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts, comments, whatever you got. <laughs> I will see you next time. Man. That's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I feel like I'm doing a, a little bit better of a job getting these episodes out more regularly. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I can keep that up. Uh, also has some interviews and even a hangout in the works. I think you guys will uh, enjoy that. So stay tuned. Hopefully I'll be able to make all that happen. Uh, let me get back to my uh, news page. <laughs> oh, as always, I want to thank you, thank you very, very, very much for your continued support of this show. I could not make a match yet without your help. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, if you want to support the show, just go to that link in the uh, show notes to the Patreon site. Uh, just ask for a buck a show. Uh, so if you like Matt Chat, you like these episodes, why not kick in a dollar? Uh, and also somebody had written in about, what about $2? You know, if you go there to the Patreon site, there's $1, but the uh, next tier is 5 bucks, and then I think it goes up to 10 after that. Uh, so it's a reasonable question. You know, why not have more tiers in between? Uh, but the fact is, if you go into Patreon, you can set up whatever you want. You could say a buck twenty-five, or two dollars and fifty cents, or three bucks, <laughs> uh, whatever it is. Uh, you know, no amount is too small, and I just really appreciate your help. It's it's really more about uh, just supporting the show, being part of the team, uh, I think, and uh, really just kind of celebrating these uh, classic games like Neverwinter Nights. As weird as it is to think about this game as a <laughs> as a classic <laughs> or vintage, I mean, uh, wow. Uh, but anyway. Uh, whatever you do, whether you support the show financially, tell people about it, post uh, comments, uh, post about it on forums, uh, tweet about it, whatever it is, I really appreciate that. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so what about that news from the Matt Cave? I got some news and I wore my uh, uh, Daggerfall shirt here <laughs> kind of a, to go with the theme of the news. We've got a lot of uh, Elder Scrolls news. Uh, and this one, first one is huge. This is a Morrowind Oral History by Alex Kane of Polygon. This is a, a big read, so you want to have some time to set aside to read all this. Uh, but he, over the last year, they tracked down 10 former Morrowind team members, including a Howard, uh, they got concept artist Michael Kirkbride, lead designer Ken Ralston. Uh, they discussed everything from Vardenfall, the strangest bits of Elder Scrolls lore, the uh, shits and giggles, that's their words, philosophy that informed them what it means to build a game world that withstands the test of time. So this is a good read, lots of uh, you know original material there. Good job, uh, Alex Kane with that. I wish this had come out in time for me to incorporate it into uh, Dungeons and Desktops. 2.0, but <laughs> uh, anyway, it's it's if you like Morrowind at all, or Elder Scrolls, you definitely want to go check out that uh, article. It's over at Polygon. And then a uh, kind of related news in a way, at least Elder Scrolls news, uh, Skyrim Grandma will be an NPC in the Elder Scrolls 6. Uh, so this woman's name is Shirley Curry. She's an 82-year-old grandmother and YouTuber known for her Skyrim videos. Uh, she will make an appearance in the Elder Scrolls uh, 6. They're not really saying, uh, giving any specifics about what kind of character she'll be or whatever. Uh, but I just thought that was some, some pretty cool news. Always good to see them, uh, you know, doing something for the most ardent fans. Uh, and then finally, uh, this isn't Morrowind stuff, but it's... Uh, uh, so enough of the Elder Scrolls news. This is about Warcraft 1 and 2. Not World of Warcraft, but the original uh, real-time strategy game. Uh, Blizzard is continuing this... Uh, weird uh, development of uh, letting uh, GOG offer their their old games uh, with DRM free. You know, this must just be, I don't know what's going on at Blizzard for this to be happening. I mean, it's amazing. 
uh, knowing the history of this company, they're willing and able to do this. But anyway, uh, you might want to go grab these uh, War Warcraft 1 and 2 bundle. Uh, plays, uh, suppose, I mean, the big deal is it runs flawlessly on modern systems. They got Battle.net back up. Um, comes in two versions. Okay, so the, the games come in two versions, which you choose from the launcher. The classic one allows for the authentic experience and a fully functional multiplayer. Uh, the updated version comes with a number of fixes to provide full compatibility with modern machines as well as high resolution support and upscaling. Uh, so that is pretty cool stuff. All right, so that'll do it for the news. Uh, uh, let's wrap it up with a quote, though. And this, uh, this quote is a bit long. And I'll read the short version, but I, I went back and found the, the source where this quote came from because I was kind of curious what the context was. And then I got kind of curious about the context. Uh, so I thought I would just read the whole thing. I'll start with a short quote, which is very relevant to role-playing games. And it goes something like this. This is a James Russell Lowell. One thorn of experience is worth a whole wilderness of warning. All right, great, quote, uh, great quotation, right? But what the heck was Lowell talking about with that? He was actually talking about Shakespeare. And this, I'll read the whole uh, excerpt here about Shakespeare. So Shakespeare knew human nature too well not to know that one thorn of experience is worth the whole wilderness of warning. That where one man shapes his life by precept and example, there are a thousand who have it shaped for them by impulse and by circumstances. He did not mean his great tragedies for scarecrows, as if the nailing of one hawk to the, barn, to the barn door would prevent the next from coming down south into the hen yard. No, it is not the proper bleaching victim hung up to molt its draggled feathers in the rain that he wishes to show us. He loves the hawk nature as well as the hen nature. And if he is unequaled in anything, it is in that sunny breadth of view, that impregnability of reason, that looks down all ranks and conditions of men, all fortune and misfortune, with the equal eye of the pure artist. How about you, that gives me goosebumps. It's that's so good. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that, and see you next week. She kicked me in the face. I hate her. Don't I?